This is a live video feed of a counter timer TAC module sitting on my desk. Check out the other videos to learn how to configure the TAC. This video is just a live demo. Our TAC signal is shown here. It's toggling too fast for our display resolution, but you can see the rate that we dialed in here. I'm going to change that to 30. And you can see the result on the screen here. We have the TAC set up in a two high, one low output mode. That is, output two will be active if the signal gets above our high set point, and output one will become active if the signal goes below our lower set value, hence the name two high, one low. For this example, we have a lower set point of 20, that's set point one is 20. Press the mode switch, and we can see set point two is at 40, with 30 being right in the middle, of course. Let's try it. If we increase the rate above our upper set point of 40, then sure enough, output two becomes active. And you have a little LED indicator here showing that also. We drop back down, he goes inactive, and we go below 20, and output one becomes active. Note that active in this demo is low. That's because these are both NPN outputs, or syncing outputs. Let's get our rate back up to 30. The TAC responds, and all the outputs go inactive. What happens if we activate the reset signal? Let's try that. So we'll force the reset signal. You can see the little indicator here on the TAC indicating that reset one is active. Well, the TAC shuts down. When we release the reset signal, that little indicator goes away, and the TAC starts right back up again. Let's try one more thing. Since the PC is generating this signal, which we can't actually see here, it's somewhat unstable. It's a function of all the interrupts and background tasks running on the PC, so it's not exactly 30 hertz. In fact, in order to get this demo to run, we actually had to turn on averaging. So the counter timer attack right now is averaging eight samples before making a decision. Let's go turn that off and see what happens. So I'm going to hold down the mode key for three seconds, and that'll get us into the configuration mode. And then I'm going to punch the mode key several times to bring up that parameter where we set averaging. And there it is. The averaging parameter is currently set at three. That means to average eight points before making a decision. We're going to change that. A two would be four points. A one would be two points. We're going to put a zero in that says to average no points. Just take each sample and make a decision. Let's see what happens. I'll lock it in by pressing the mode key. Hold the mode key down for three seconds to flip us back into the operating mode. And now we're running. So we're at 30. Our set points are 20 and 40. As we get close to the 40 set point, though, let's put it like 39 or 38, you can see we get these intermittent responses. It's actually varying up beyond 39 and 40 cycles per second. That's how unreliable the PC signal is. Let's come down near 20. And we'll put in like 21. And sure enough, output 1 is telling us that on the low end, it's just as unreliable. So you can see how important it was to have that averaging turned on. That's a really handy feature to have in this counter timer attack module. There are four different tachometer modes to choose from. So take a look at the manual to see which one best fits your needs. Well, that's all there is to using a tachometer. Be sure to check out the other videos in this series to get the most out of your counter timer attack. And as always, please send us any topics you would like to see covered, or any other comments for that matter. We appreciate the feedback.